morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful rainy April day at RLC. So good to be together in this place and this space. Let us rejoice in this day that God is making. Um, A few announcements before we begin this morning. You'll notice a new face up front with us. And then we welcome Pastor Eric, our new interim senior pastor. You all will have a chance to to greet him and meet him today in the social hall following worship. So please go and do that in the social hall. There will be treats and time to, to say hi and start to get to know him. So please do that following worship. And... If you're looking for adult ed, after you quickly greet Eric, um, adult ed will be in room 40, just down the hall. So please do greet Eric and then join adult ed. We've got a busy morning this morning, lots of things going on, and lots of things going on this week as well. Um, Before we get to this week, though, we do also have an ice cream social later on today for anybody going to WAPO this summer. If you'd like to meet some other kids who are going to WAPO, if you're nervous about maybe not knowing anyone, come back later this after, or still this morning, later this morning at 1145 in the activity center. You can come enjoy some ice cream and get to know other folks who will be going to WAPO this summer. And then... We also have a food drive going on this month, so bring in some food drive items and you can place those in the big blue bins right outside the, right inside the doors. Tomorrow morning, we bring back Pastor's Bible Study at 10 a.m. That will be in room 40. We'll be looking ahead to the next week's text so you can get the inside scoop on what will be happening in, the ne- in next week's service. And then tomorrow evening at 6.30, we have a Meet the Builder event for our organ where our design for our new organ will be revealed. It's super exciting. So please come to that at 6.30 tomorrow evening. And then finally, a couple, looking a couple weeks out, we have our next family fellowship event. This is really exciting. The Nature Center is going to be joining us here at church on April 21st. And so for more information on that, if you're interested, please talk to Jenna and you can get registered. It should be a really exciting event. There's more. There's always more happening. Check out your update for more information and all the things that I've missed and all the things that are going on at RLC. With that, let us start our worship together. Please stand in body or spirit.
The congregation can be seated and I'll have any kids join me for story time this morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Thank you. I know it's kind of rainy and dark and cold outside, but we're at church. It's a happy day. Woohoo! All right, my friends. So today we are talking about sharing. Now, I know lots of adults and probably older people tell you all the time that sharing is super duper important and sharing is caring. Have you ever heard that term before? Yeah, I bet a lot of people out here also have heard or maybe said that term. And, but something I want to know today, we're just going to forget about that for a minute, is what is something that you just don't really like sharing? Like, do you not like sharing maybe like your favorite food with somebody or maybe like, like when you're playing video games and your sibling comes over, like you don't really want to share that, do you? What do you not want to share, Sophia? Sharing a bed with her sister. <laughs> How about you, Sylvie? Oh, she doesn't want to share her stuffies with someone else. That's, that's a special thing, right? Does anybody else want to share? Ha, huh, want to share, that's funny. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, so it's kind of hard to want to share some stuff sometimes, right? Especially like, I have a lot of siblings up here right now, actually. It's kind of hard to share stuff with your siblings sometimes, right? Like, you kind of have to share a lot of stuff in your life, don't you? I know when I was younger, I didn't want to share stuff with my brother. Like, pff, that's mine. I don't want, that. I don't want you to, sh to use that. But today, we have something super duper special that we want to share with everybody, not just people in our congregation, but maybe other people outside of church here. And it's something that happened last week. Do you remember what happened last, last Sunday? What happened? Easter, yes! Jesus Christ rose from the dead and he's coming to save all, all of us from our sin and he has all this grace for us and it's super awesome. So, we're going to start by telling a bunch of people what happened last week. And, yeah, there's a bunch of people right out here. How convenient, right? And so we're going to say something that you might have heard last week. So we're going to start by saying, he is risen. Can you try that? And then I bet you guys know what you're going to say. You're going to say, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Great job. All right. We're going to say it. We're going to say our part, and then the congregation is going to respond to us. Are you ready? Because yeah, we're going to share this great news that Jesus is alive. All right, ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That was so good. Thank you so much for sharing that great news with everybody out here. And thank you so much for sharing it with our children here. It's awesome. So before we go, let's do our prayer together. So you can have your hands out. You can fold them together, whatever you might like. So repeat after me. Dear God, we are excited to share the good news of your resurrection with everyone. In your name we pray. Amen. Great job, friends. Let's head on off to RLC Kids, and we will be back later. Please stand in body or spirit. We have come to worship God, the living God, who calls prophets and teachers to bear witness. We have come to praise God, the almighty God, 
who answers the forces of hatred and hurt with the power of grace. We have come to worship God, all gracious God, who chooses even you and me to receive and carry the word of life and hope. All glory to God. Please be seated. A reading from Acts, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. 
They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas the son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. This is going to work. <laughs> My uh, father was a, a Lutheran pastor, hardworking, underpaid, uh, in the state of Iowa. Uh, spent most of his ministry in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and uh, West Des Moines, Iowa which meant that uh, every summer uh, we would take our annual trip to Long Lake Resort in Park Rapids, Minnesota. It's the only place where we were allowed to take summer vacation. My dad was very firm about that. It was always Long Lake Resort in Park Rapids, Minnesota. So we would pile uh, into a car, <clears throat> my parents in the front seat, and then myself, <clears throat> myself and my three sisters. I had three sisters. I was the oldest with three sisters. The odds were always, always against me. But uh, myself and my three sisters would pile in somewhere in the back of the car. Now, the trip always started well. We were all excited to get to the lake. But eventually, my sisters would start to ask the question that every parent dreads, are we there yet? Maybe some of you have heard that. Why is this taking so long? And they'd repeat the questions again and again and again. And then the intensity within the car would increase when we found ourselves behind a National Guard convoy <laughs> traveling at 45 miles an hour up Route 52. <clears throat> well, eventually my parents had enough. And so they would stop at a small town and they would release us like dogs out into the small town park for a break. And we would run around, myself and my three sisters, not one, but three. We would run around in the park until eventually we would stop asking the question, are we there yet? Why is this taking so long? And we would become family again. I use this illustration because interim, which is the time period that we find ourselves in now, is kind of like that stop in the park. Uh, it is a time within your congregational history where you're going to take some time to create some space between the previous pastor and the new pastor so that the new pastor can flourish. But we also know that interim is a time when anxiety can run high within the co uh, congregation. As the congregation asks again and again and again, are we there yet? Why is this taking so long? We shouldn't be surprised by that high anxiety during interim time. Because, you know, there's nothing new about high anxiety in faith communities. 
Uh, we kind of hear this anxiety in our reading for today where the apostles asked the Je Jesus a question, it's not, are we there yet? Well, why is this taking so long? But you can hear the anxiety behind the question, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? We need to know. Because there was an expectation at that time that the coming Messiah would make Israel prosperous and powerful again. Now, I don't know if Israel was ever all that prosperous or powerful, but there was a movement within Israel to make Israel great again. Maybe that sounds familiar, and maybe you should be concerned about that. I hope you are. But Jesus, in a kind way, says no. And he says no by redirecting their expectations. Where again and again and again, and Jesus has to do this with disciples and now apostles because they never seem to really get it. He reminds them, you know, my mission here is not to make you prosperous and powerful, but rather my mission in the world has many aspects, but today I want us to focus on this that my mission in the world is not to make you prosperous and powerful, but it's to make you in the world more generous and more gracious. Not prosperous and powerful, but generous and gracious. Generous, not prosperous. We hear this in that one little verse from our reading for today, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and then Judea, and then Samaria, and then finally to the ends of the earth. That one little verse helps us to remember that Jesus' mission in the world is not just for us, but it's for the whole world. And so today I want us to remember that we are a called people of God called to be generous and gracious. And as a generous and gracious people, we are committed to giving that is deep, and we are committed to a welcome that is wide. We are a congregation committed to giving that is deep and a welcome that is wide. We are committed to giving that is deep. I always remind congregations that you're only as large as the depth of your giving. When the depth of your giving is shallow, then oftentimes your impact within your community, within the world, is small. And there are countless congregations throughout our denomination that choose depth of giving that is shallow, and that's fine. But when the depth of your giving is deep, it will impact your community and your world substantially. So the challenge of our generosity is this question. Will our impact, as Roseville Lutheran, be small, or will it be substantial? From what little I know, and I don't know much, but from what little I know, Roseville wants to have a substantial impact in this community and in the world. Look at what goes on here every day, every week, all year long. It is important here that the depth of our giving runs deep. That's why pretty soon we're going to be going through another praise event. Just learning about this, but it sounds exciting. So be excited about praise. Because it's not only a fund raiser, but it is a fun raiser as well. It's not only a, an event that adds depth, 
to our giving, but it builds community within our congregation. It builds community between this congregation and our community. Now we have some fun things uh, that we're trying to plan out as pastor's challenges. I just remind these two that I'm 63, not 36. <laughs> Those are the only boundaries. I don't have a lot of boundaries, but that's one of them, all right? I'm 63, not 36. But we'll be determining some pastor challenges for that praise event, and I encourage you to participate in that as we grow deeper in our giving. Because remember, Jesus reminds us, and again, his mission has many components, but today I want us to remember that Jesus wants this world, through us, to be more generous and more gracious. Generous, not prosperous. Gracious, not powerful. Therefore, we are called not only to be a generous people, but a gracious people, concerned not only about the depth of our giving, but also the width of our welcome. As a congregation, as a called people of God, we are only as strong as the width of our welcome. We are strong when we welcome all. We are weak when we exclude others. So the challenge of our welcome is this question. Will we be strong in our witness to the gospel? Or will we be weak in our witness to the gospel? In other words, will the width of our welcome be narrow? Or will it be wide? I'm always amazed by congregations <clears throat> that go through the very hard process of becoming a reconciled in Christ congregation. It's not easy, ask the task force who kind of ran that here at Roseville Lutheran. But the thing that amazes me is oftentimes congregations go through this very hard process and then when they're done, <clears throat> they hang a, a sign <laughs> on the door that says, all are welcome, and expect people to kind of magically show up. But we know that it doesn't work that way. And that we have to be intentional in expanding the width of our welcome. By focusing on the questions of, now what? How will we live out our welcome to all as a reconciled in Christ congregation? So we're going to be working on that as well during this time of interim. A time where we create space, again, between the previous pastor and the new pastor so that the new pastor can flourish. So today, as we consider the depth of our giving, the width of our welcome, I want to close with a, a powerful reflection uh, from Jason Cox. Jason is the rector uh, at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in San Francisco. And in this he, uh, reflection, he makes reference to the village of Bethany. And Bethany is just a small village at the base of Mount Olivet. And he asks this question. Why did Jesus lead his disciples out to Mount Olivet at Bethany to say their final goodbyes, which is the ascension? And then he goes on to note, Jesus chose to spend a lot of time in Bethany. It was always where he stayed when he came to the city of Jerusalem. After all, Mary, Martha, Lazarus lived there. But Bethany 
It was not a very nice neighborhood. Uh, it was outside the walls of the city. It was just out of sight of the temple. The name Bethany translates to something like the house of affliction. The house of affliction. It was where the city of Jerusalem sent its poor or sick. He notes that Bethany was built out of sight of the temple so that those coming into the city to worship that day wouldn't have to see all the poor and sick. And that is precisely where Jesus chose to spend most of his time. And in so doing, he reveals the truth of the ascension. And J Jason concludes with this. The truth of the ascension is the truth that real love costs everything you have. And real love, and this is the part I want us to remember, is the only thing that matters. Real love is the only thing that matters. And that real love requires the depth of our giving and the width of our welcome. Because it is the only thing that matters. Real love. That love fully revealed in this one named Jesus risen among us today. Now I'm not suggesting that we change our name to Bethany Probably not a good way to start in the interim, maybe halfway, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I am suggesting that what is vital in the world today is making sure that our giving runs deep and that our welcome always runs wide because the real love, again, found in this risen one named Jesus matters most in a world filled with division and anger and hate. And I pray that this real love be revealed through us as Roseville Lutheran, as our giving runs deep and our welcome runs wide. Amen. Now we are going to rise and sing our hymn of the day.
You may be seated. My name is Kathy Miller. And my name is KJ Bach. And we, we are Roseville Lutheran's, Lutheran's connection, connection with, with Incarnation, Incarnation Lutherans, Lutherans, all hands on hope, Feed My Starving Children, Mobile Pack Action Team. <laughs> now, Feed My Starving Children is a Minnesota-based Christian nonprofit with the mission of, it's in the name, Feed My Starving Children. In just two and a half weeks, Roseville Lutheran will be joining Incarnation with the 17th Feed My Tar Starving Children Mobile Pack. It's the last full week of this month, so it's Wednesday the 24th through Sunday the 28th. And we're here to talk about that opportunity today. Um, this partnership needs over 2,000 volunteers. And we will pack those 2,000 volunteers over 600,000 meals, which will end up feeding almost 1,700 kids for a, a year. 1,700 kids for a year. Now, what we need, though, um, with those 2,000 um, volunteers is we also need $180,000 in order to pay for those ingredients. So if you have ever packed with Feed My Starving Children, donated or prayed, please stand up. Woohoo! That is wonderful. Now, I want to say, um, you um, you people have an opportunity um, to do it again. And for those of you who were sitting, I want to say that this is your year because there are three things that we need. The first thing is we need donations. Um, the donations will um, pay for the ingredients. Now, for $106, you can feed one kid for a year. Isn't that amazing? Well, with that donation, you can also get one of these t-shirts because for $106 you will get the t-shirt. Okay, we will take any amount though. You don't have to give, uh, if you can't give $106. The second thing we need, remember I said 2,000 volunteers? We need volunteers to help pack and also special volunteer runners. You, volunteering is really so much fun that you don't have to do it just once. You can do it multiple times. So the sign up is, um, we've got um, the code where you can sign in. I'll be out there after um, to help you sign up or you can go to our website. And the third thing we need you to do is pray. We want you to pray for um, the pack itself, for the volunteers, for the kids that end up getting the meals, and for the logistics of the whole thing. And there is a prayer calendar out there at the desk too. And I do want to see a, say a fun fact from Feed My Starving Children. 96% of the meals end up getting to their intended destination. 96%. Do you know, these aren't going just up to Duluth. They're going around the world, and they 96% get there. Why? It's the, it's the prayer. Um, at the end of every packing session, we pray over those meals and then send them off with that prayer. Um, so um, the two of us will be out in the commons after. We can answer questions. We can help you sign up, um, anything you need. Um, and then for those of you who are online, there's more information on the website. I just want to say that this is an amazing opportunity for all of you to be the hands and feet of God. Thank you for practicing generous giving to RLC with your time, your gifts, your talents, and your money. If you'd like to give online to Roseville Lutheran's uh, general ministry, you can do that with the QR code or use the text to give feature. Those of you that are worshiping with us online today, you can uh, go to our website to make a gift as well. There are also connection cards in your pew. And for those of you that are new or visiting or want to help out at Roseville Lutheran or in need of prayer, just fill out a connection card, place it in the offering basket, or hand it to an usher. For you kids today in worship, you're invited to come up and put your offerings in that basket. Thank you for all of the ways that you show up for Roseville Lutheran Church, allowing all of us to grow and deepen our relationship with each other and with Jesus Christ. Thank you, and thanks be to God. Let 
blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my sin. Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. song, praising my Savior all the day long. Please rise in body or in spirit and let us pray. Today we rejoice that Jesus is risen, and love has triumphed over fear. O oh, gracious God, we remember on this day of his ascension, Jesus drew near to the disciples, and we pray that Jesus draws near to us this day, so that our faith is renewed and our witness to God's love for all people is strengthened. Today we celebrate the spring that continues to bloom around us and the rain that nourishes it. We pray that God, our creator, continues to nurture all growing things. Guide all who tend the soil and nurture plants into life. Today we are thankful for our community and our community leaders who work for the wellness of our neighborhoods and the dignity of every person. Today, we remember that justice is done by us and among us. We pray for an end to racism and other oppression, and for a world where all are fed and safe and no one lives in fear. Today, we celebrate pastors, deacons, musicians, administrators, money counters, and volunteers who facilitated Holy Week and Easter among us. Open all of our hearts to discern where God calls each of us to serve. Today we remember the ministry of generosity and grace that lies before us every day. We pray that God help us grow into the depth of our generosity and the width of our welcome so that we may become a community where all are welcome. And finally, gracious God, accept our gratitude for the lives of those who now rest in you. Grant us your peace amid our fears. 
Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding grace and generosity. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And let us confess our faith to each other and in front of God. Gracious God, we confess to you and to one another that we have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not fully loved our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and free us from our sin. Send your Holy Spirit to empower us to live for you alone. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. And the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life, And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we pray your name and join their unending hymn. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. The table is set and all is ready. All are welcome for those who wish to receive it. You may be seated.
Please rise in body or spirit and receive these blessings. And now may the body and the blood of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. People of God, you are sent in the power of the Holy Spirit to be God's witnesses, to proclaim the good news and love of Christ to everyone you meet. So go from here in the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Go now in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.